now let's go to the second part of first question okay second part of the first question i'm uh, discussing with you now so we have already completed 135 and 225 how to find the hcf and lcm uh, hcf by euclid's division lemma or the euclid division algorithm we can say so uh, the procedure is going to be similar the numbers can change in the exam remember that any number can be asked but uh, uh, here the technique is more important for us right so the question if you read carefully is uh, find out the hcf of 196 and 38220 so 196 and 38220 okay right? so that's our question find the hcf of 196 and 38220 so uh, the process is going to be very similar to what we did at discussed with you that the bigger number is always taken as a and the smaller number is taken as b question number 1 part 2 we are going to divide the bigger number by the smaller number okay so 196 if i multiply this by 2 6 to the 12 to i'll get 9 to the 18 19 91 392 which is more than 382 so it will go only one time so 196 ones are 196 then i'm going to subtract this so here we get 2 so one carry here 12 minus 6 i'll get 6 one is already carried over here so there is seven left here so here we get eight and uh, here we had already carried one so this is two so we get 186 bring down two so we get 1862 now let's see how many times that is going to go so 196 i'll multiply by 9 probably 96 is 54 4 5 carry 99 and 81 5 86 6 8 9 and 8 17 So one thousand seven hundred and sixty-four. I'm getting here. This is nine times. When I subtract this, I'll get eight, and here I'll get nine eight. Bring down the zero. We get nine eighty, right? So one ninety-six goes five times. Nine eighty. You get zero. So actually, what is happening in this question is that this is perfectly divisible. So it is going to finish in the first step itself. So when I'm doing a is b q plus r in this question. I'll get three eight two two zero is equal to one ninety six. So remember that dividend is equal to divisor into quotient one ninety five plus the remainder. Remainder is zero. So this is directly divisible. So the second step need not be done. So the last divisor wherever the remainder is zero will be your answer here. So here we are getting the HCF as one ninety six itself because it's perfectly divisible. so the last divisor where the remainder is zero so division is complete in the first step itself so this is how we do this okay so we go on to the next question the next question is find the hcf of 867 and 255 867 and 255 okay so you can try this is a this is b i am going to divide the bigger number 867 by the smaller number 255 so 8 67 255 let's try out how many times three times 5 to the 15 5 to the 15 plus 1 16 we do this we get 765 so three times 765 i'm going to subtract this is 2 0 1 102 the remainder is not zero so the previous divisor now becomes a dividend so 255 is going to come here 102 will go two times so when i multiply by 2 what will happen this will be 204 right then again i'm subtracting this 5 minus 4 1 this is 51 remainder is not zero so the previous divisor becomes the dividend now so this is 102 51 2 0 to 102 remainder is zero i will stop so i'm going to write it in the format a is bq plus r so 867 is equal to 255 that's b into quotient was 3 and the remainder at the first stage was 102 second step dividend was 255 divisor 102 quotient is 2 remainder 51 step number 3 dividend is 102 divisor 51 quotient is 2 remainder is 0 i will stop here so hcf is going to be my last divisor so i can say hcf of this is 51 so this is how we do the euclid's division lemma and this is how we are doing the steps 
So when we are doing it in steps, that is an algorithm. Algorithm is a series of steps. So step one, step two, step three, and we stop here, right? So we move on to the next question now, that is show that any positive odd integer is in the form of six q plus one, six q plus three, or six q plus five, where q is some integer. Every positive odd integer is in the form of six q plus one, six q plus three, or six q plus five. Every odd positive integer is in this form. So whenever we get a word problem like this, we will always say according to according to Euclid's division lemma, according to Euclid's division lemma, A is equal to B Q plus R, where R is greater than or equal to zero and less than B. This is our standard statement, Euclid's division lemma. So A is B Q plus R, R is greater than or equal to zero and less than B. That I've already explained that remainder can never be negative. Remainder will always be zero or more than zero, but less than the device, right? So if you compare this with what we have to prove, the coefficient of Q here is six. So here the coefficient of Q is B. If I compare this, I will say, let the value of B be six. I'm assuming six because that is the demand of the question. If suppose it was four Q plus one, in the exam, you may get 4q or 2q something, then the value of b will be that. Here, the value of b is 6. So if value of b is 6, r will be greater than or equal to 0, less than 6. Because instead of b, I'll replace with 6. Therefore, r can be, what are the values of r? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. It is less than 6, no? Less than 6 means it can be up to 5. 0 can be included because there is a greater than or equal to sign. So now I need to explore all this. R is zero, R is one, R is two, R is three, R is four, and R is five. These are the six cases. If R is zero, what is going to happen? My A value is going to be six Q. Okay, here what, have, what has happened? The value of A is six Q plus R. Are you understanding this? The value of A is six Q plus R because instead of B, what have we done? We have assumed the value of B as 6. So A will be 6 Q plus R. And what are the values of R? These. So case 1, when I'm putting R as 0, A will be 6 Q. If I'm putting 1, A will be 6 Q plus 1. If I'm putting 2, A will be 6 Q plus 2. If I'm putting A, uh, R as 3, A will be 6 Q plus 3. This will become 6 Q plus 4. And this will become 6 Q plus 5. Now, what is the question? The question is, of odd positive integers, odd numbers. So what is the difference between odd and even? Now, when you look at 6q, multiples of 6, they are odd or even. Multiples of 6, 6, 12, 18, they're all even numbers. So this is even. And if I add one to that even number, I'm going to get an odd number. So this is odd. This is going to be even. This is going to be odd. This is going to be even. And this is going to be odd. So the question at the moment says about odd numbers. So which are our odd numbers? Our odd numbers are, therefore, our odd positive integers are what? 6q plus 1, 6q plus 3, and 6q plus 5. The, in the exam, they could have asked you also even numbers. Then the answer would have been 6q, 6q plus 2, and 6q plus 4. Okay, so this is how we solve this question. Right. Question number three, an army contingent of 616 members is to march behind an army band of 32 members in a parade. The two groups are to march in the same number of columns. What is the maximum number of columns in which they can march? So maximum is the clue here. Maximum is asked. So maximum is what? It's here, highest common factor. If you're, if you're talking about minimum, that obviously it's going to be a different question. Here, they're not asking you about that. Here, they're asking you maximum in how many ways can they can march in different ways. 616, now you've seen the army band, no? So 616 people are marching behind 32 people. Now the number of rows and columns have to be same. It's not that, you know, in the first row, there are four people, then there are five, it's not like. Same number of rows and columns has to be there. So that is what the question is that 
an army contingent of 616 are marching behind 32 if they are marching in the same number of columns what is the maximum number of columns in which they can march so we need to find out to find the maximum number of columns we need to find out the hcf and we can use the same method this is a this is b so 616 i'm going to divide by 32 right 32 ones are 32 so i'm going to get 9 here here it is 5 so this is 2 uh, 296 now I'm going to <clears throat> multiply how many times? I'm going to multiply by 9, let's say 9 to the 18. 9 to the 27, 288. So I'm going to get 9 times 288. And the remainder I'm going to get is 8. So I've got a remainder 8. I cannot stop here because I have to do it till the remainder is 0. If the remainder is not 0, then the rule says that the last divisor becomes the new. So what happens? 32 will come here. So 8 goes 4 times, 8 for the 32, remainder is 0 now. 8 for the 32, remainder, I can stop. So A is equal to BQ plus R. A in the first step is 616. B is 32. Your quotient is 19. Remainder for this in the first step is 8. Right? In the second step, A is the dividend, that is 32, is equal to divisor into quotient, that is 8 into 4, plus remainder is 0. I will stop. So what is the HCF? HCF is the last divisor when the remainder has come zero. So the last divisor is eight. So HCF comes out to be eight. So I can say the maximum number of columns in which they can march is eight. Maximum number of columns in which they can march is eight. So eight, 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 they will be marching like that in columns of eight. So all the members will be accommodated. Then we go to question number four and five, which are very, very important questions. You can mark these questions important. Using Euclid's division lemma show that the square of any positive integer is in the form of 3m or 3m plus 1. Square of any positive integer. Square of any positive integer is in the form of 3m or 3m plus 1. That means when I square a number, any square number, let's say 25, they are saying either it will be a multiple of 3 or it will be a multiple of 3 plus 1. So is 25 a multiple of 3? No. But I can say that this is 3 into 8 plus 1. So it is in the form of 3m plus 1. Suppose I take 36. 36 is a perfect square, right? But it's a multiple of 3, direct. 3 into 12. I can take any example like that, any example, 49. 49 is not a multiple of 3, but I can write it as 3 into 16 plus 1. So any square number, whatever you take, okay, will always be either a multiple of 3 or a multiple of 3 plus 1. That is what the question needs to be. So how are we going to prove this? We are going to use uh, a method, the same method, Euclid's division lemma. Okay. So as per the Euclid's division lemma a is equal to bq plus r where r is greater than or equal to zero and less than b standard statement okay and here look at the coefficient of m the coefficient of m is three so i have told you look at the question carefully of what should be the value of b it varies from question to question so let the value of b be three let the value of b be so what will happen? A will become 3Q plus R. And what will R become? Greater than or equal to 0, but less than 3. Right? We are assuming B is 3. So R can have the value 0, 1, or 2. It cannot have 3 because it's less than 3. Right? So 0, 1, 2. These are the values of R it can have. So I will take all these cases. Let R is equal to 0 first. Okay? First case, let R is equal to 0. So A will become Instead of R, I am putting 0, A will become 3Q. But the question is not direct. It is now saying that the square of this. So what we need to do is square both sides. Okay. When we square both sides, this is going to become A whole square equal to 3Q whole square. A square is equal to 9Q square. So A square is equal to, and 9 can be written as 3 into 3Q square, isn't it? I'm breaking this up because I, I'm not interested in this number nine. I'm interested that is the multiple of three. Now, whatever is in the bracket, that can be replaced with M. M stands for multiple, let's say. 
So 3m, so 3 is important because 3 into anything is a multiple of 3. So a square is equal to 3m, where m is equal to 3q square. So whatever, irrespective of what is there in the bracket, the outside number is very important. So 3 into anything is a multiple of 3. So I can say that square of a number is a multiple of 3. So I've got, I have proved this for 3m. Now, let me take the next case where r is equal to 1. Okay, so it's a, it's a long question. It's a five mark question. It can be a three mark question. Okay, so if r is 1 now, a will become now 3q plus 1, right? Because instead of r, now I'm putting 1. Again, now I'm going to square both sides. So what's going to happen? This is going to become a square equal to 3q plus 1. And now this is going to become a square. And here I have to apply the identity, which you did in class eight, a plus b whole square is equal to a square plus b square plus two a b, right? This is the identity. So a square will become nine q square plus one square is one itself plus six q. Or I can write this as nine q square plus six q plus one. Okay, I'm just rearranging this so that the multiples of three come in front. So what I'm going to do here now, I'm going to take three common. So a square is equal to three common, three q square plus two q. Okay, I'm taking three common plus one as it is. Now, as I told you in the previous question, whatever is in the bracket, replace that with m. So what are we going to get? A square is three m plus one. Here the value of m is three q square plus two q. So we've got that square of a number can be 3m or 3m plus 1. But don't stop here. The reason being, there is one more value of r. And what is that value of r? r is 2. So we need to do with r is equal to 2 also. So if I'm doing with the r is 2, a will become 3q plus 2 now. Now I'm going to square both sides. I'm going to square both the sides. So what is going to happen? I will get a square is equal to 3q plus 2 whole square. So a square is equal to here, I'm going to apply the identity a plus b whole square. So this will be a square plus b square plus 2ab. So a square will be 9q square plus 4 plus 2, 3, the 6, 6, 2, the 12 q. So here I'm going to bring 9q square and 12q as it is. These are already multiples of 3. And the tricky part is to break this 4 into 3 plus 1. Because 4 is not a multiple of 3. I don't want any 4 term here. I want either 3m or 3m plus 1. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to break this 4 into two parts, 3 plus 1. Now what we need to do is take 3 common <clears throat> in the first 3 terms here. So a square is equal to take 3 common. I'll get 3q square, 4q plus 1. So this is all 3 common plus 1 as it is. And now what happens, instead of the bracket, we can replace it with m. So I'm going to get a square is 3m plus 1, where m here is 3q square plus 4q plus 1. So what has happened in these, I have proved that square of a number can either be, so here I have got a square as 3m, here I have got a square as 3m plus 1, here I have taken the value of r as 0, here I have taken r as 1, here I have taken r is 2 and here also I have got a square as 3m plus 1. So in all the three cases, what is the conclusion that the square of a number can either be in the form of 3m, that is multiple of 3 or 3m plus 1. There cannot be any other format. So you can mark this uh, very important and it's a, there is a possibility that it will come in the exams. Right, so we move on to the last question now. That is, using Euclid's division lemma, show that cube of any positive integer is in the form of 9m, 9m plus 1, or 9m plus 8. Cube of a positive integer is in the form of 9m, 9m plus 1, or 9m plus 8. Okay, so cube, cube of a number is either in the form of 9m, 9m plus 1, or 9m plus 8. This is what we have to prove. Cube of a number is in the form of 9m, 9m plus 1 or 9m plus 8. So, how to prove this again according to Euclid's division lemma? This is a standard statement. According to Euclid's division lemma, 
a is equal to bq plus r r is greater than equal to 0 or less than b okay now normally i told you in the previous question look at the coefficient of m the coefficient of m is 9 now and then i said assume that so i am going to assume let b as 9 normally but here there is a big problem because when i am taking the value of b as 9 your r value will be greater than equal to 0 and less than 9 so what are the values of r 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 you will get nine values and it's going to take at least half an hour to do nine values because you saw in the previous question we just did three cases and it was so long so if i'm going to take nine cases imagine the length of the question so what i'm going to do when i'm getting questions like this i can always take a lower multiple of that number so if i'm having a number like nine i can always take it as three if i'm getting 16 i can take it as four if I'm getting 25, I will not take 25, I will take 5. Okay, so I'll take a lower multiple of 9. So I will not take let b as 9. You can do it, but 9 cases is too much. I will say let the value of b is 3. Okay, very important. Let the value of b is equal to 3. So a will become 3q plus r and r will now become greater than or equal to 0 and less than 3. So we have only 3 values. r can be 0, 1 or 2. So it's slightly easier to solve when there are three values as compared to nine values. So first I'm taking let r is equal to zero. If r is zero, a will become three q because plus zero we don't have to write. And now just like the last question where we were squaring it, now what are we going to do? We are going to cube both sides. We will cube both sides. So what will happen? This will become a cube is equal to three q whole cube. So a cube will be this is going to be 27 q cube. Now 27 q cube, I don't want 27. I am interested in the number nine. So what am I going to do? I'm going to replace this 27 with nine into three q cube. What am I going to do? I'm going to replace 27 with nine into three q cube. Okay, so nine multiplied by three q cube. And whatever is in the bracket, I told you put it as m. So what am I going to get? A cube is nine m. M here is three q cube, where m is equal to three q cube. So whatever I've done, I have just, instead of squaring in the previous sum, I'm now cubing and I'm getting in terms of nine. So I have got one answer that the cube of a number is in the form of nine m. Now I have to get the other two. So what I'm going to do now, let the value of r is one. We have three values of r. So I've done with r is zero. Now I'm going to take r as one. So a is going to be three q plus one, now you're going to cube both sides. A cube is equal to three Q plus one whole cube. Now here comes your class nine knowledge of identity A plus B whole cube. If you have forgotten, please note down A plus B whole cube is equal to A cube plus B cube plus three A square B plus three AB square. This is the identity which you did in class nine. If you have forgotten, kindly note because that will be used in class 10 also. So a cube is equal to three cube whole cube plus one whole cube plus three a square into b. This is your a and this is your b. So three a square b plus three a b square. Okay, a cube b cube three a square b three a b square. I am using this identity. So a cube will be three cube. That is twenty seven q cube plus one. 3 square is 9, 9 3 is 27, 27 cube. This is going to become 9 cube. So I'm going to get this. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take 27 q cube, 27 q and 9 q as it is together. And one I will write separately because these all three are multiples of 9. So I can take 9 common here. I'm going to get 3 q cube plus 3 q plus q and I'll close the bracket and plus one. Now, whatever is in the bracket, I'll replace with them. So I'm going to replace this with them. I'll get nine and plus one. So here my value of M is three Q Q plus three Q plus Q. So I've got the second one, nine and plus one. Now, what am I left with? I am left with nine and plus eight. I'm left with nine and plus eight. So what am I going to do? I'm going to do that now. So nine and plus eight, so what will I do? Let me take the next page or I can erase this, let's say. 
okay so i am now taking r as 2 so a will become now 3q plus 2 right i will cube both sides i am going to get a whole cube is 3q plus 2 whole cube so a cube is equal to now a plus b whole cube this is the identity so this is a cube plus b cube plus 3 a square b plus 3 a b square right i'm using this a cube b cube 3a square b 3ab square so a cube is equal to this is going to come 27q cube and b cube 2 cube will come 8 3 square is 9 9 3 is the 27 27 into 2 54 so i'll get 54 cube 2 square is 4 4 3 is the 12 12 3 is the 36 36 this is q square okay this is there is a q and whole square so 54 q square this is going to come 4 3 is the 12 36 q so this is what i am i am going to get so here except for 8 all are multiples of 9 so i am going to bring the multiples of 9 together all the multiples of 9 together and plus 8 separate. So what I can do is I can take 9 common in this. So I will get 3q cube, 6q square, 4q, okay, plus 8 outside. So whatever is in the bracket now, what will I do? I will replace with m. So this is going to be 9m plus 8, where m is equal to 3q cube plus 6q square plus 4q. So this is how we solve this. So if you notice what has happened here, the cube of a number has been proved as 9m first. In the first case, when I took r as 0, I got 9m. Here, I'm getting in the second case, 9m plus 1 here. And in the third case, I'm getting cube of a number as 9m plus 8. So these two questions, fourth and fifth, are important. and uh, uh, this is all, the first exercise is based on Euclid's division theory.